Good morning from Hong Kong. It's Saturday morning. It's uh, 1 o'clock in the morning and the weather is dark. Uh, thanks for in inviting me to present today and thank you for joining me. Uh, my presentation is Design Matters, Harnessing the Power of Design for Your Brand. Uh, I've designed the presentation uh, to be inspiring. Uh, I think it'll be a bit fun too and I look forward to your questions at the end. So let's, uh, let's get started. Well, design is power. Uh, it's both utility and feeling. It's truth and it's beauty. And just to demonstrate that, a few images here that we know and, and can relate to um, with the Fiat 500, uh, function and feeling, or the Mac products that perhaps some of you are, are watching this on, and certainly I'm operating from. Or Evian with the Ishimiake bottle. It's water, but it's also a feeling. This image you may not be familiar with. This is the Sands Casino in Singapore. Looks like it's something out of Flash Gordon, something, something that perhaps is imagined but not real, but it's real. It's a hotel, it's a casino, and it's got that amazing top to it. It's its function, its feeling. Or even in the luxury spirits area with Johnny Walker borrowing codes from the perfume area to create that feeling in addition to the function. Or Boucheron, uh, the fragrance, the fragrance maker. And even with naming, uh, this is a bakery franchise we see in Southeast Asia. I think it just has a great name. So what might just be a very functional ordinary perhaps bakery is called bread talk and suddenly it's it's closer to you and you feel more a part of it and there's something shared or this image that I found recently of a candy store a real candy store um, with these images which support the fantasy of of candy maybe take you back to your youth a bit but that's all great but there's still a lot more bad design than good design, and maybe that'll always be the case, but it's kind of fun to look at bad design, too. Uh, it reminds us what not to do, and perhaps also reinforces when we do something really well. We can feel good about it. I share this image also from Asia. Uh, this is uh, the New Lisboa Hotel and Casino in Macau, about an hour's ferry ride from Hong Kong, and it's designed to look like a lotus plant. It is, in my opinion, you may disagree, one of the ugliest buildings in the world. Um, because right next door to it is a really lovely building. This is the MGM Hotel and Casino, which is really, really an interesting and intriguing and seductive building. Another example of bad design, naming design. This is, this is Terminal 4 at Singapore's Changi Airport. Budget terminal. Every time I drive by this, I have to snicker because it makes me think that, oh, you know, if you're flying out of the budget terminal, maybe you don't have shoes, maybe you're brown bagging your lunch. Um, couldn't they have thought of a better name? And in fact, this is one of the airlines that flies out of the budget terminal, and I'll leave it to you to decide if you think that's a great name or not. Everybody picks on this example of Tropicana, perhaps, but they had such a nice design before, why did they change it? I am in Hong Kong, as I said. I travel a lot in China. You see a lot of Chinese brands in Tier 3, Tier 4, Tier 5 cities now where there's a lot of action. Not everybody's looking at Shanghai and Beijing and Guangzhou anymore. Um, in these third, fourth, fifth tier cities, as I said, you have a lot of Chinese brands trying to be international. And I took this picture last year, and I just had to stare at the name. It didn't really make sense to me. And it, uh, it shows what you're trying to do, but it's not a good design. And even the giants, even Coca-Cola, make, make mistakes. Um, they don't make many. Coca-Cola's extremely good marketer, as we all know. Uh, but this is from Japan. This was a ready-to-drink coffee they introduced a few years ago called Depresso. Um, I can't tell because I can't hear you if you're laughing on the line, but I remember seeing this in Japan. This is a picture taken from a vending machine. Of course, in Japanese, if you read the katakana, it says deep press. So a deep press coffee, but it made me think of people drinking this and then jumping off the Rainbow Bridge. 
So, we look at great design, we look at less great design. It does beg the question sometimes of who's actually in charge of the design uh, at your organization, at a client organization. Is it your CEO, like Tim Cook? Is it a consultant, like Sergio Zeman? Or is it your head marketing person, your CMO, like a Procter & Gamble? Sometimes, and we see this in Asia a lot, I leave it to you calling in from Europe or, or North America or even Asia if you're up late, um, you see sometimes that it's, it's really delegated. It might be the brand manager, the marketing manager, uh, communications manager. Uh, and all too often we see that this responsibility for design is deferred really deep down inside companies, which we think is very dangerous. It's, uh, it misses out on opportunities at best, but it can be dangerous. And really, the CMO should be the CDO all, also, and you know, coining that, that three-letter acronym, the Chief Design Officer. It's all too important. There's too much at stake to delegate your brand's design because great design touches your consumer, and it creates meaning, and it creates differentiation and ultimately it creates advantage. So, let's have some fun. Let's do a quiz. Let's see if you can answer these questions correctly. I'm going to give you hints about brands. I'm not going to identify the brand. I'm just going to help you understand how they've used and built equity over time and done it carefully so that you can even guess who this brand is, these brands are, without me revealing them. So here's your first hint. Cool. Technology. Fruit. Okay. Apps. I. Apple. I bet everyone got that one. How about this one? Red. Car. Sex. Fast. Italian. Horse. Okay. Ferrari. How about this one? Pink. French, youth, Alps. <laughs> I see Hello Kitty. Stay tuned, she's coming up later. Minerals, low, Evian. Alex and Tiffany got it. So did Clara. Freedom, American. Red. Cowboys. Got it. Tobacco, Marlboro. Friends. Blue. Connect. Dot com. Mark and Cheryl. Robert, you're the first. Facebook. Luxury, leather, French, bag, monogram, Guy Martineau, good French name. I think you knew this faster than everyone else. Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Green, star. Julie Holland Music Lager Heineken Well done Sport Athletes American Shoes Air 23 Nike. I wanted to put Olympics in there because everyone thinks Nike sponsors the Olympics, but they don't. Adidas sponsors the Olympics. So how did you do? I'll bet you guys did well. I could see. Uh, thank you for texting me so many of you. Uh, I'd say the group got pretty solid A- minus on all that. Very few misses, actually. Um, so another question, just rhetorically. What design tools do you have at your disposal for your brands, for your clients? This is all about the power of color, 
typography, logos, symbols, patterns, language, imagery, forms. You know, the power of color. We talked about Heineken just a minute ago. Everybody guessed Heineken pretty quickly. I was just noticing the other day that that very small design effect that they have, that little green pull top on the top of the can is so meaningful because Heineken really owns green. There's lots of other beer brands that are green, but somehow Heineken, Heineken owns it. And sometimes a little design touch here using color, not changing anything else on the can, really works, is really strong. There's also the power of shape. I believe this is a Belgian mineral water brand and it feels like an icicle. It's fantastic. The power of shape, such a strong tool. The power of symbols, you know, BP, they're an energy company. And you look at this, this identity, which I think Landor Associates did, and they're a clean energy company now. It's the power of that symbol. And of course, Coca-Cola, the power of the Spencerian script, their logo is so incredibly um, pervasive. The power of patterns um, here with Burberry, again, resonates so well. We can look at that and immediately we know the brand. This brand you may not be familiar with, but if you're if you're in Japan, this is a sochu, uh, sorry, a chuhai, and the can is slightly carbonated. But when you open the can, the, the carbonation is released, and the can develops a texture in your hand. It's fantastic. Um, you know the product is great too, but somehow your hand is drawn to it. You want to you want to hold it. You want to buy it. The power of imagery. You know this this poster that we know from I guess the 2008 campaign of of, of our president, uh, our American president, Barack Obama. Um, so powerful. Um, the power of sound. I won't actually hit this button because <laughs> I don't think it'll sound very good, but I think if you just close your eyes and you think about the Harley driving by, you know, that, that's, that's a powerful tool that they have in their toolbox is the sound that they have invented and keep on their motorcycles. This is a brand from Asia you, you may know or you may not know, but I can tell you that if you see it in New York or in London or Paris or in Asia where you see it more frequently, uh, it's associated with a smell, a ginger jasmine smell that is just so incredibly seductive that you always smell in the store and just outside uh, as you approach the store, which really draws you in and it's so much a part of their brand. The power of language, you know, we looked at some names that were terrible like bu Budget Terminal and that Rouvre or whatever that said, but LinkedIn, so powerful, the language is so strong. A logo is nice too, very simple, but the, the, the power of language. Somebody mentioned Hello Kitty a little while ago, and it's the power of characters too. I think there's a power of characters around the world. Certainly Disney's an example of that, but I think in Asia in particular, characters have a special meaning. And Hello Kitty, look at Hello Kitty. And I read something recently about Hello Kitty. I'll, I'll stay on this slide a little bit because I think this is interesting for everyone. The reason Hello Kitty appeals to people, the reason she touches people so strongly, whether they're children, um, teenagers, or even adults, is because she has no mouth. And when you look at Hello Kitty, she immediately feels the same things you're feeling. So if you're, if you're happy right now and you're looking at Hello Kitty, she's happy too. And if you're stressed out, it's the beginning of your day there in America, if you're on this call and you can't wait for it to end, uh, she feels the same way you do. The power of materials, you know, Budweiser going to the, uh, with some of their uh, limited editions, I suppose, with the metal can, uh, the aluminum bottle can, really creates a very strong uh, opportunity for them to feel more masculine and really connect, as well as a wonderful graphic, but uh, the power of materials. And the power of discipline, too, just the hierarchy of how Method has used this with a laundry detergent. You know, everything is there that you need to know, but they've, they've shown incredible discipline, very interesting shape as well, but incredible discipline to make you feel that this is really an effective product and this is a premium product and this is something that I need to clean my clothes. Um, the power of typography, you know, many examples of this. Perrier, it's wonderful. You feel the bubble inside the typography. What a great tool. The power of innovation, you know, what Dyson has done uh, in the vacuum uh, area, but also the fan area. It's, it, it's incredible. And I want to show you something that I saw in Korea just this week. This is a Korean snack food, the power of innovation. If you notice on the right, I've, I've highlighted with arrows, that this little snack pack has actually two tear-offs, one at the top and one in the middle. And I was looking at this and I kept thinking, I wonder why that is? And then I realized, well, of course, we all know this. When you're eating a bag of Cheetos, I can say that as an American, I've had a few bags of Cheetos, um, 
you know, you start at the top, but as it gets near the bottom, maybe it's a little messy when you stick your hand in. This allows you, as you go through it, you can tear it off in the middle. It's, and it's so small. It seems so small, but it's so nice. It's so innovative. And the power of customization. You take a global brand like Nestle has, like Kit Kat, and here it is in Japan, where they're always in, experimenting with flavors. This particular flavor is wasabi. Wasabi Kit Kat. So, moving right along. Um, I hope you found that part of the presentation entertaining. I, I thought I would, I would close with um, what I say are some design myths. Really some things that perhaps we always felt were fixed about what had to be the case as we looked at our design toolbox, uh, but maybe aren't so fixed anymore. Um, the first one is less is more. Well, many times, probably more often than not, less is more, but it's not always the case. And I, I pull out this case of that Coca-Cola is using for their campaign, the Coke side of life. And actually, when you look up in here at what the expression is of what's coming out of the bottle, it's actually fairly, well, fairly complex, but there's sort of a complexity inside the simplicity. But I think in this complexity, there's actually more. It, it communicates more about the brand. A second myth, and this used to be sacrosanct, is never play with your logo. That actual rigid consistency is vital. Well, if you think back to the 80s, actually MTV was one of the pioneering brands to play with their logo. And you can argue that in all these 20-something squares you see here, it's very different each square, but actually it's also one brand. It's MTV. And of course, in this day and age, probably the example that we see most, maybe every day, if it's our, if it's our, if it's our uh, portal, our browser, is Google. In fact, yesterday I saw they had a, a wonderful tribute to... Uh, I think Ella Fitzgerald on, on Google. Third myth, a design with legacy cannot be changed. Big brands always stay true to their guidelines. Well, we talked about Heineken. Here they are again. Look at this wonderful bottle that they've done. I guess it's a bar bottle. It's a, it's a bottle can. This is on the left side what it looks like during the in, in the light and in a darker club environment. It has the, the glow in the dark inks. They've cropped the logo. Oh my God, what have they done? But you know what? This is 100% Heineken, and this is something that I think pushes the brand to be closer to the consumer. The fourth, successful logos are always very well crafted with very fine details. Well, a lot are. Great example, one that's not is Yellowtail Wines. Very, very simple, almost. <laughs> You'd almost say it's not designed, but actually it is, and it works really well for them. The fifth is, if you change your logo, you change your image. Well, again, back to Heineken. Look at these limited editions they recently came out with. One of the bottles is even white. And I couldn't help but show this. I'm not trying to make a political statement. I think this is actually very interesting. Blackwater who many of you might have read about in the news as an American contractor in Iraq. Um, they got a lot of negative press in 2009. They changed their name. They changed their logo. Then they changed it again. Um, it's interesting because um, change your logo, change your image, yes and no. Always use your global design. Well, sometimes there's great opportunities to break away from it. This is an espresso machine. Uh, co-sponsor was Shanghai Tang, the brand I mentioned before that is so associated with the power of smell and it was done for the Year of the Dragon. Um, very interesting case with a French winemaker, um, Lafitte uh, uh, Rothschild, uh, for their 2008 vintage when they released that last year. They put the Chinese character 8, that's the red mark you see below the Roman numerals, uh, I'm sorry, the 2008 uh, numerals, the, the, the Chinese character for eight. Case sales shot up and the price of the 2008 vintage went up by 30% just by a little customization. Local brands are always following, copying global brands. Well, that certainly used to be the case. We still see it a lot in Asia, but it's not always so true. Here is, believe it or not, this is a great trivia question for cocktail parties this weekend. What is the number one mineral water brand in the world? It's not heavy on but it is a Danon brand. It's this brand. It's Aqua. This is a brand from Indonesia. Indonesia is a large country. It's got 300 million people almost in it. Um, 
It's also sold in Singapore and parts of Malaysia. This is the number one mineral water brand in the world by volume. And look at the design. Is it copying global designs? Well, sure. It's got a clear bottle. Blue. Lots of brands are blue in the mineral water category. But look at the typography. It looks like something from Mark Twain, like from a Mississippi riverboat. And in fact, the typography is actually called Mississippi. Number eight, advertising is branding. Well, not really. Um, Apple, which does great, great advertising, always fun to watch. Whether you're an Apple fan or not, you always have to uh, be intrigued, perhaps even laugh. This was pretty funny, PC guy and Mac guy. But is that really branding? No, not really. It's important, and it represents the brand, but it's not branding. Number nine, disobey category codes at your peril. Well, most people don't remember, but when Coke Zero was launched a number of years ago, it was launched with codes that were predictable. <coughs> Pardon me. Silver, white, a little bit of black. Somebody in Coke said, you know what? We should do something different. We should break away. Who would have dared to have done this? But they did. Very, very successful. Now, all of a sudden, if you have a zero-calorie beverage, it doesn't have to be white. It doesn't have to be silver. It can be black. And more and more, this is happening everywhere. Asia as well. There's no ROI on sustainable design. See the Grolsch bottle before on the bottom left, and you see the work done by our brothers and sisters at Anthem. Um, this is still 100% Grolsch. Arguably, it's, it's probably better branded than its predecessor. It's using less paper, a label that's really only around the neck, but it's using embossings on the bottle um, to communicate the brand. It's very, very strong, and I'd have to argue that the ROI on this is terrific. High brand awareness is a key measure of success. Well, I gotta tell you, if you haven't come to this realization yet, you will soon. All our clients are coming to it. We live in a contact world, not an impact world. And, you know, 20 years ago, everywhere I went in Asia when I first came out here, I just saw the Coke logo everywhere. Well, Coke has 100% awareness, pretty much, 99% awareness, but that's not necessarily meaningful. And Coke actually understands this now. And it worked much more when they sponsor the Olympics or whatnot. It's, all, it's a lot about the event and connecting with fans. It isn't just about name recognition because, again, we live in a contact world, not just an impact world anymore. Twelve, global brands are more premium than local brands. Well, there is that distinction uh, in Asia in particular Global brands tend to be perceived higher, but not always. Here's a great brand, if you don't know it. It's Singapore Airlines, rated by many people to be the number one airline in the world. It's got this great imagery, brand imagery, of the Singapore girl. It's got interesting typography. It's got a symbol which relates back, the, the Chris, it's called, which relates back to um, uh, the area in Singapore and Malaysia. You know, people who've never flown an airline constantly rate Singapore Airlines, or I've, sorry, have never flown Singapore Airlines, constantly rate them the best airline in the world. They have an amazing brand. And while you could say it's an international brand, and it is, um, it really is a local brand that's become international. Thirteen, your advertising concept is your design concept. Well, I'll go back to this one. I showed you this earlier. And again, if you're from PepsiCo, I don't mean to pick on you. Um, but I think when you look at the left hand side, uh, the Tropicana package from before and now reinstated, and you look at the package on the right, doesn't the package on the right kind of look like a print ad put on a package? That's not always a good thing to do. This is terrific though for this brand Palm in terms of the name, the graphics, the shape, all working together. Very, very powerful. Research trumps intuition, number 14. Um, well, when I was a kid, McDonald's didn't serve breakfast, and as I understand, they researched it, and consumers overwhelmingly said they would not eat breakfast at McDonald's. And, of course, you see at the top, not that Steve Jobs had anything to do with the Egg McMuffin. In fact, I'm sure he would never eat an Egg McMuffin, would have eaten an Egg McMuffin, but he said it's not the consumer's job to know what they need. And look at this wonderful lineup of intuitively created products. And then lastly, just for fun, the myth that all designers look artsy. No, I'm not a designer, and I don't look artsy either, but there's Shepard Ferry, the famous graffiti artist who did the Obama campaign poster we showed before. He doesn't look very artsy. 
And here's a very famous man from our business, Wally Olins, who one might argue doesn't look artsy, but looks a little crazy. So design is power. Treat it with care. Be the CDO. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, I just got a question. It's a good one. Are the myths, the 15 myths that I mentioned, more specific to Asia or are they more global? Well, there are specific myths to Asia that I, I didn't cover here because I wanted this to be uh, an international view. But I'd say that all the myths I just went through are actually applicable across borders, uh, well across borders, across continents and borders. Uh, it's true in Asia. I hope it's true for you in Europe and North America, and I believe it is. Oh, okay. It's one o'clock in the morning and you're giving me tough questions. You say, I say advertising is not branding, but is branding advertising? Um, interesting. I would say that if you look at a package as an example, which is certainly a, the manifestation of a brand, one of the key manifestations of a brand, it is advertising. So branding can be advertising. And again, I, I had that little quote in there earlier about packaging is advertising. I really believe that to be true. And I think it is often kind of an oxymoron that people refer to you know uh, brand advertising I think it's very very rare where where advertising particularly traditional well traditional or non-traditional advertising is truly branding oh my gosh what is the danger and delegating design down in, or, in an organization. Well, um, you know, I think it devalues design. I think when the also when the when the C level of your company is involved, it forces a discipline, a regimen, um, a reflection that's deeply, deeply important for your brand and its future. There's a tendency that I've observed in Asia when the design is delegated deep into the organization, deep down into the organization, and it's not really uh, touched and nurtured also by the sea level that it becomes a little too opportunistic a little too tactical and 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 that can that can be dangerous for a brand um, Stephanie I just got a question from Brenna Knotts thank you Brenna do we send out copies of our presentation I actually don't know the answer to that I think we put this on YouTube if I'm not mistaken Yes, we do. <laughs> so, Brenna, it'll be on YouTube. I believe we'll send out a, a note that confirms that to you. Oh, great. Jim Lucas, you won't want to miss that one. I'll certainly tune in for that, even if it's late here. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining me this evening. Have a great Friday and a great weekend. Good night from, from Hong Kong.